hello guys um, apparently supposedly there is some voice over right now if Google wants things to be working okay so basically I have no idea what I am doing so let's just let's just 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 start it <laughs> and pick. great so you can see and hear me that's great okay so first things first um i am clearly not a native speaker so sorry for my accent and talking method and probably probably gamma, grammar mistakes and all that <laughs> uh, oh yes okay you can see my photoshop as well and uh, i am pretty nervous so that will also affect the whole thing but let's just have fun and and just talk about art stuff i collected all the things you sent me in the last 24 hours and uh, here, are, here they are and uh, let's just walk through all of it so the first one will be oh yeah uh, my Hungarian accent is totally <laughs> beautiful I bet so the first uh, will be um, just a question more or more likely because uh, the art we are talking about is not supposed to be seen yet and this question is about drawing black horses or dark coated horses and uh, how you can make them less flat and less so dark you basically lose information like line art and stuff clearly we are we are talking about more about the line arted horses not the fully painterly rendered horses because painterly horses don't have line art so let's just grab my super dark boy which is my kuda pariso horse as a more or less okay example and uh, basically every horse coat and basically everything in our world is reflecting back some kind of lighting and it depends about many many things such as uh, but the, what kind of environment our object is in and what kind of light is hitting that object be it about a living creature or basically really an object and dark horses are not so different either so you think dark horses are just dark and 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 black and and just like that but they are not because they are living in a 3d world so they have 3d shapes and light hits them in a certain way and as light travels around that form the creature or object has there will be places that are more dark so basically in shadow and places that are reflecting back some kind of light and uh, you can I try to catch that with tulip as well so he is a super super dark purple horse but he has some per, uh, lilac or some kind of uh, tones as well and dark horses black horses especially tend to reflect back blue and that blue either way comes from how their short fur breaks up light and uh, or ho or they reflect back the sky and you can see there are beautiful living 
Akhalteke horse. And this horse is inside some kind of barn or something. And even if it is black, like 90% of black of the body, uh, he still has super, super black parts, which is like the, let's just grab some colors here. Yes, of course, yes, yes. It depends about how strong the orange light or yellow light because um, the orange will be more strong if it we, we talk about sunset or if we talk about uh, midday, for example, because uh, depends uh, how low or high the sun is on the sky and how busy the sky is, and I mean busy, like how much particles in the air and what kind of angle the light heat uh, light is hitting the atmosphere and what kind of uh, how much particles are in the sky at the moment or clouds in the moment and how they they all this breaks up the light so when the sun is setting or rising and uh, it is just a lower point on the sky closer on the horizon the angle the light hits the earth uh, hits us is uh, much much lower and because of that and usually when the light co goes through the horizon and the, all the dust and the mist and everything closer to the ground as well uh, they break up the the light of course we all know the Pink Floyd fans <laughs> Uh, we'll know about this, the whole prisma thing, how the crystal breaks up the, the light and you can see all the RGB colors or CMY cave colors. Uh, so basically the rainbow and uh, that will reflect back in the sky as well. So, and it also depends the, the light wave because light have different waves and the red is, for example, the uh, longest one, and uh, they just j they just survive better the the whole breaking up parts. So that's why you can see purples and reds and oranges when the sun's setting, and the and the s the air is just busy with all the particles, and that's why you can see more yellow when the uh, the sun is higher on the sky, and maybe the sky is clear and the whole traveling and breaking up is just much much different and and it's easier for the light to travel through all the atmosphere and i <laughs> and i really took my time to explain this sorry so yes short <laughs> light can the yellow light can be reflected on the on the black horse too as well but they but they really tend to to reflect back the the, the blue because they had just have this this bluish undertone or I, I i really don't know the exact reason because i didn't put much uh, study in it i just see this co color <laughs> to be honest so back to our living horse here so the really, really dark parts are the parts where the the forms are turning away from the sky, uh, from the light source, like here with the belly, and here, and here as well, and of course here, and the shoulder area is always interesting because light always breaks on the shoulder, because oh my God, I just draw over the horse. <laughs> because uh, it just it just changed the form so it looks like this and this so i just it traveled like here coming here and it just have fun here and suddenly everything just breaks, breaks up here but because this is a bone and imagine like the light is sleeping there so that's dark 
because change, the planes are changing and the rest can vary between a bluish tone and maybe a, a lighter grayish, so not, not pitch dark. So this is how you can indicate forms and play with your value, values and play with uh, some colors as well. And I am sure you hear, heard it many, many times, do not color pick your references, but that's only true if you mindlessly color pick the references because color picking can be really useful, be it about an art reference or a real life reference. And if you just color pick for a test, uh, this horse. You can see how blue it is, actually. It's still blue, it's blue, it's blue, 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 a little bit purplish blue, 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 and we are going to the darker area. And not really saturated as well. So it really stays in the mid-range here. So you can play with all this and try try a different variations for your black horses and they will come together as well so you can you can really really play with your once again your colors your values and leave the dark colors for the deep shadows so if you check the horse it's not really black but ra rather a dark purple and once again the not very saturated area yes black horses actually blue horses <laughs> so yeah they are pretty fun and white horses are truly a nightmare because white horses is like or are like uh, mirrors and they just reflect back everything and their shadows are usually the ugliest kind of yellow. I, I just freaking hate to work with white horses and uh, yeah, don't, don't have white horse horses because <laughs> that's a catastrophe and I have to, so I, I know it. I know them. Where did I put my horse? Yeah, so Tulip basically has here purples and blues and some violet here and of course black for the shadows and uh, that's I try to reflect in my crappy painting. So let me just uh, have some help because I did not take notes about the questions. I remember most of them just just to be sure okay so this horse we saw it already because i wrote about it before let's just catch the questions yes how to shade white horses. Uh, yes, that's, that's a hard nut to break. I am still working on it, but basically the whole logic behind the vi shading white horses is just the same as shading black horses. Uh, I would really recommend, and I will do the same, uh, to really study some references because, because white's really, really, really hard. And uh, it's really important to pick the, the correct base color because white horses are not pure white. You cannot pick a pure white or pure black or pure dark base color for your black or white horses because remember that if you want to shade or highlight a black or white horse and you, and you just pick a too dark or too light base color. You cannot do highlights on it. And uh, really just pick tons of references, study them, look at them. What kind of colors are you seeing on the horses? Pick the colors, 
really but pick the corals because of reasons so pick the corals because you want to see what kind of corals are on a horse or a, a white horse or a black horse and then just 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 paint them <laughs> and you will fail and fail again but keep going they will come together sooner or later and and yeah that will be that that's great feeling when you just crack that hard knot and they start to come together so that's it that's our basically <laughs> suffering <laughs> Yeah, uh, yes, dogs and other hairy animals are pretty difficult because, yes, horses have longer hair for the mane and, 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 the, and the tail, and that's it. And the rest of the body is just pretty short. But yeah, I really want to paint some wolves and foxes, but <laughs> I chicken it out because of the very long fur and, and I still have so much to learn about horses, so I really didn't move on from them. But we will cover the long hair when we get there, <laughs> so maybe another 10 years or so. So back to, oh my god, I will totally mispronounce the name, sorry guys. Eilarci? I hope I tr managed to get close to the <laughs> correct pronunciation. So, so this horse, that's that was I mean, I think two weeks ago in my stories, and uh, the question was or is shading, and oh shading, I love shading. Shading is so much fun. So shading, basically, let's just do some theoretical thing. Uh, I am sure you, many of you saw several. Let's shade the basic circle thing if I can. Put on, press the shift key. So, what is shading? Shading are the parts where the light doesn't hit, and uh, shading can indicate us uh, helps help us to indicate 3d forms because we are drawing in a 2d environment and lots of beginner artists are making the mistakes they they are thinking in 2d and they try to draw in through 2d and they don't understand why their drawing is not adding up and it is because they are not thinking in 3D. You have to think in 3D and you have to know you are trying to put 3D objects on a true 2D environment or in a 2D environment. And uh, how you can trick the brain of the humans who will stare at your art to see the 3D thing you wanted to draw. So for example, this is not a circle a field circle, this is a sphere. <coughs> and how I can make you look, make you see the sphere I am thinking about. And that's shading. So let's shade a bit darker. Never, never, never ever shade with pure black. Not because, just, just because, because if you shade with black or uh, gray or something like that you basically will make a corpse of your horses or anything living <sighs> shadows has colors shadows has uh, their colors depending on what they are on so it's kind of depending on the base color of the uh so how they react to the whole image, so what kind of base color the object has. Shadows usually are cool, except when they are not. <laughs> and, uh, and so yeah, they have some kind of tint. They are not black, not gray, not everything else. On, on, so not grayscale, but they have some colors. But am I okay? Okay, so let's say the light comes from this way this way, I mean this. So sh shadow will be on the opposite side. So 
so far so good. We have amazing shadow. Okay, but this is not really accurate because in the shadows you can see reflected light. And reflected light is usually, and no, it is weaker than the direct light because light has this annoying effect of bouncing back from everything and when they bounce back from something they just steal their color so if they bounce back from glass it will be green if they bounce back from i don't know a red box it will be red no 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 i wouldn't recommend to use white for highlights except <laughs> if you are talking about a white horse i guess uh, but no light also has color except it is a, uh, a sh uh, cloudy day because clouds are not really really breaking up the the light when particles do so light is just white when it is cloudy out there uh, I mean really cloudy so when you cannot see the sky but otherwise light has some kind of color it's usually yellow or orange or it really depends or it is uh, a human made light it can be anything like blue or red or anything yes colored, colored highlights are better because as I said yes lights are lights have colors and, 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 and I mean, on a white horse, you can even use really, really hot and, and whitish yellow. So that will be look like basically white, almost white, but not pure white. So you can get away with almost this. This, this is a white light highlight effect, except it isn't. Of course, there are materials when they have uh, a white highlight, like a metal ball, when you basically hit it with with white it's he white light and and then then of course the highlight will be also uh, white yeah shadows <laughs> shadows are also basically because they they just mess up all the lighting stuff and that's why when all the sky is super cloudy and you cannot see the sun or anything everything just seems great that's because the light getting through the shadow uh, clouds are the light is white so everything else is white so everything else is just gray because white light hits it and it's so boring so back to our sphere sphere here or we will never <laughs> never finish the streaming so reflected light it steals colors from the objects they are reflecting back from and it's weaker than dialect light that's the most important thing you have to know about it and it's of course you have to count where it comes from so maybe this ball is a sphere oh oh but ball is also okay it's on a, a white table and it's it's lighter and uh, and it it's reflects back some white lighting and it will just hit it's my pen do something okay i can see it yes so it will reflect back a bit on the sphere great let's add some highlights or dialect right So there's our pretty matte metal ball. It has highlight, it has shadows, and it has reflected light. And basically, this is the very same logic behind shadowing or well, shading a horse or shading something else. Sorry, I have to drink because I'm pretty, pretty parched.
reading the questions, side note questions. So white highlight occurs when the image is kind of burning up. Yes, super white highlight is kind of when you're burning. So, so this is, if this is a super shiny metal ball, I can really go super hot, super white, maybe even hard edged and just, but I just, And now suddenly we have some kind of really shiny ball here. Maybe a little bit hotter around it. Maybe ma make it whiter, the highlight. And yes, that's it. But but if the if the light here would be I don't know yellow but really strong yellow uh, so really hot you can still pick a tinted highlight so this is pretty it's, this is almost white but still has some kind of tinting this is also almost white but still have some kind of tinting so use the the, the fewer volume range of the colors because if you narrow it down it it your your pictures just will be super contrasty and super flat. Oh no, you can free to ask questions, so don't don't be sorry about it and you don't have to ask the last questions either. So last question, I'm so sorry. How do you know when to use hard shadows and stuff? Yes, great question. It depends on the edges oh, of the object you are shading. So soft edge shadows usually go to places that has that are flashy or has more fat and round. That's that's the that's the basic thing. So soft edge shadows are goes to places that are round. Just like a just like a, a belly of the horse. So let's go right down. This horse has a nice belly that is round. So we can just maybe a little bit darker. A bit more tinted. Super dark. <laughs> yeah, this is not my best work, so please <laughs> bear with that. In here as well. That kind of stuff. But shadows are hard edged when you hit something bony on a horse. So it's usually the head of the horse when where there are less fat uh, on the top of the head the top of the head of the horse and many other animals as well really really bony because basically that is just the top of the skull and and some skin and that's it same goes for the horse same goes, same goes for us so you can you will really see some hard shadows uh, under the eyebrow in a strong light and uh, around collarbone, for example, that is also really bony. So let's just see, this is really, really um, stylized horse. Maybe I should just pick mine because I want Beatles here. So basically, I just put some hard, hard shadows, for example, here, because this is bony. You can also put some hard shadows here, very hidden, here, a tiny bit. Definitely hard shadows. 
maybe a bit as it goes softer just smudge it a bit but this is oh, definitely hard also hard where I used to archer rose so yeah so where where you meet bones use hard shadows where you meet round edges on the legs maybe legs are also very bony the lower part but that goes over here so you can really put some hard shadows here so you can really shade the legs with hard shadows most of the time hard edged shadows and for parts that are the neck and uh, belly and whenever you hit the muscles the butt, the, the butt for example that is also soft as shadows and it is really important to build up your shadows so don't start with super super dark shadows but maybe start a bit of a mid tone and you can Add, always uh, can add more darkness to it as you s developing it and because places like the end of the really hidden faces like this kind that will be super dark this will be also really dark here also really dark so where the light is really cannot hit that will be dark and the rest won't be that mu that much dark because uh, it maybe it won't get direct light but it will still get some light so as it turns away from the light because the light comes like here hitting the withers and then traveling down the sh uh, what is this the shoulder and it will really have some hard time to hit, hit this kind of part and just travels up so it will be a soft transition and I mean soft I am just really clumsy because I am super nervous but you can imagine I hope so basically that's that's the whole logic and don't be worried because once you really crack the logic behind shading and lighting it will be super easy so easy uh, I don't really use references for my shadows anymore I just wing it usually <laughs> I don't advise that for others but once you have enough confidence and you know the logic behind it you probably will be able to pull out pull off something that is believable and of course if we add the uh, refracted light maybe some grass this horse probably has if he stands on a I don't know a field you can just always add some greenish tones to the belly that is usually being hit by that reflected shadow or, or even here to the legs maybe a bit of a, uh, a neck here as well as well just like a jaw so that is basically facing the grass that that will be hit by by the reflected light and always can add some some blue to the top because if nothing else the horse will fa horse will face the sky and it is always better you let your transitions run through so have some space oh this is so ugly and patchy but yeah this is just a very basic demonstration so yeah but this is the logic behind my horses just they look better when i have time for it and that's it and same goes for the the lighting so the sa very same logic so the lighting will hit one spot directly and it is just 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 flows away as, as they travel around the form I always imagine it like when you 
pour water on it. So like water runs, runs down on the objects. And that is basically lighting and shading, just not with water, but light. So like for lighting, you just imagine pouring melted gold <laughs> on the horse. And that's it. That's lighting. What was the question here? <laughs> I think this is just an overall kind of sent in horse. It's just an overall Pegasi. Pegasus, I don't really know that term. So what I think about this horse. Okay, so what I think about this horse. This horse looks very pretty. I love it. And uh, I, really, I really love the whole stylizing the anatomy thing. Yeah, that I really love. It makes sense. Maybe a bit could be be the, the face could be a maybe just a tiny bit better so yeah eh. because this is not this low radar it starts from the eye and comes here like this so a little bit higher and not that long and but overall I really like I really love the legs legs are pretty difficult uh, the shading and highlight is a bit little bit basic but it really fits the style and I like it the highlights don't really make always a uh, sense for so like this here and here on the in the shadows you don't have highlights Hmm. Why again? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the and that is a that was a, a question or a statement about hard edge shadows are forming when they hit a hard hard object. Where was it? And basically, how casted hard as shadows are forming when an object box the light yes i found it a hard shadow i think it is when an object box the light yes that's true but only if uh, only if i don't know how to say this only if the object and the shadow close to each other so i mean the shadow is close the more the shadow is closer to the object it gets harder and harder edged so here it is the wing is a perfect example because if we if we assume that the shadow is this close to the wing as it is it should be hard edged because it is not that far away from it to be smeared away and for example, if we put some shadow under this horse, it, it could be a little bit smudged, maybe, because it is not super, super close to the horse. It is, of course, a massive body blocking the light, and, uh, and it will still have some kind of edge but uh, but not that super super hard if if not really a super strong light hits the horse and it really depends on the strength of the light how close the shadow is the object and uh, and yes and 
uh, the direction is just one, what what angle the light is coming from and that's all so yeah overall i really like the horse and uh, uh and and yeah it's, it's a great drawing uh I really love the wings as well. Wings are really, really, really difficult for some reason. And uh, yeah, I, they almost made me cry when I had to draw them on my, my own Pegasus piece. So yeah, this is, this is a fine horse. I love, I love the light. The, if, if you wanna, wanna work on the, on something, then the, the lighting and shading could be a bit more defined, but that's it. But the style takes this lighting. I love it. Oh yes, I love this one as well. It was. It is about the pose, and the, and the pose is being too stiff, and how that can be changed. And this is a draw this in your style entry, and I can easily easily show the draw this in your style original piece but what i will represent or explain here so what you really need cl is a line of action and basically uh the whole uh figure drawing practice and that's that's really not a super difficult thing to do or super long uh, thing to do because it is basically just you grab a pencil or a pen draw the line of action I mean draw it why <laughs> you are not drawing it you are draw it I did and then you really say ho how the, but that's my erasure where the head will go and uh, this is the spine line it can this can be the the tail and another line of action can go for the wings for the legs as well and that's it you have the basic stru structure for your horse and you don't really have to to wing a pose just like it be, without a line of action because drawing the first lines for the very basic structure for your pose will help you to grab the the flow you want to have in the pose and i am pretty sure they did this too here because because look how these lines are connecting and they really really flowy really curvy really grabbing the dynamic the po this pose has and and yeah the, the whole line of action practice will really help you to to tackle down the poses and and have more action in your poses and really you just need some kind of references and and maybe a timer because we usually do this with the timing you can really set up a five minute or two minutes or one minutes and the Hardcore version is, uh, I think, 30 seconds. And uh, you just start the timer and try, to, try to, to nail the same pose, the same lines, and try to see these basic sh lines, uh, the line of actions in a pose. And really, you can do what, whatever creature you want to do, from humans to horses to, to can canines, anything, anything. You can do anything with that and the, all you need is just lines and circles for it and that's it uh, otherwise I really love the background really I love the horse as well uh, and I love how the original was uh, a wolf yes a winged wolf and you made a, a winged a pegasus basically and but but the horse is a little bit smudgy you really need to play with uh, your edges a bit more 
because if everything is just soft, it will be smudgy. And you cannot really see the details without some kind of edges as well. But but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's a great piece. And, and yeah, some little bit practice and it will be perfect. Yes, cheval. shading or anatomy we can do both i hope i picked a good one because it is supposed to be a chestnut cantering it is a chestnut but not really cantering or it is just in the middle of cantering so shading the shading is basically the same that i explained before it is a good basic shading. It could be a bit darker at places when shadows are not hitting. So like, here, and definitely a bit here, maybe us. here if we are not talking about reflected light as well yeah i used to put some darker here put some darker here so where really sh lighting cannot cannot hit the horse and that's it the tail will have cast that shadow that's sure And on the opposite side, for some reason, the withers used to have some darker parts here. And then this is lighter and that follows the spine. But yeah, I love the lighting. The lighting is really, really good. And I love how you use some cold tones as well in the lighting that's really good and uh, yep here it could be used some darker i really really love this purple tone that's a great pick for white yep and this is the bony parts we, are, we talked about on the leg so you can really put some darker shadows on these parts because these are really bony and uh, really make some hard shadows. And this is soft. There, really just tiny thing. And maybe here a bit more shading, not much, just to hint it is a round body part yep that's it as for anatomy i love the legs i always draw super long legs for my horses and i know they are not that long but i don't care and i really adore the long legs but the neck is a bit short i think and i have this problem as well I usually draw my necks too short, but I think it should be short or longer than than this one. But ah, uh, yeah. I, I if I if I recall correctly, the le the necks are usually one head and a bit more long. So not not just one head long, but one head and a quarter, for example. And things like that but uh, it is really really a good uh, uh, pretty well balanced piece i love it i love it i love it i love it it's as long as it should be yeah i love it don't be afraid of darker values for the shadows when it is needed but otherwise it is it is a great piece i love and yes it is the other version of the horse and yeah the same things goes because that is basically the same horse, just different colors. 
Yeah. This is also an overall piece uh, because I did not get any question with it. So let's see, what do we have here? It's cute. I love it. It's cute. It's super cute. Ah, and this is a, a great example for the black horses problem because this horse is black, but it is not pitch dark black. Because black also has tone variations, as you see. Stella used uh, gray tones for this horse, gray, grayish blue, and uh, it was a great choice because it makes the color more natural, natural, and I and less flat. So you can really hint forms and anatomy and shading, hinting it without actually shading the horse uh, because the coats of any kind of animals is not one tone only but it has several tones in it even the base the, the basic color so without the environment uh, colors at all and yeah that is a great great method to cheat a bit it is not cheating per se but but to make your horses more interesting even if you want to do just some quick colored sketches and yes this this horse is is pretty pretty cute i love it love the tiny tiny butterfly wings and yeah i don't don't really see any kind of problem with it because it just doesn't have it anatomy is great she the shading could be pushed a bit more but it is really just I think it was just a, a really quick piece or some kind of chibi or something like that. So not an overly rendered piece. And, and yeah, I love it. I love it. And I love how the colors from the flames and magic and everything reflects back on the horse a bit. Oh yes, we have a dragon. Mm. Yes, Kanashi, I forgot your piece. We, I will add it in a moment. I just noticed. So let's see the dragon. I know dragon is a, not a horse and, uh, and uh, a fantasy creature so we don't really have dragons in real life sadly but it is still a four-legged creature and the four-legged creatures tend to have the same anatomy traits as well so i i said i i, I will have a look at it and i saved some close-ups as well so like we have this and this just to see the painting but let's just go over the body first because the body is a bit bit seems to be off a bit not long enough so it is some it is even if it is a a four-legged dragon but it's quite skinny because i assume this is the main form of it and this just seems to be too short this, this is uncomfortably too short it should be a bit longer to make less it less squished and compared to this length of the body the the, the legs are too too long and and yeah that that is a bit bit just weird but nothing you couldn't fix to make it a bit longer so more like a, a longer rectangle and not really closer to a box because yeah this this is weird this is this is pretty normal because it has it has a, a chest area here and this is the tummy with all the guts and everything it suddenly comes the hip and the guts won't have any space to be and yeah that, that's just that's just weird 
but uh, otherwise it, it's not a huge problem so you can always fix this yes yes the wings the putting wings on creatures that are not existing is a pretty tricky because you don't have real references <laughs> but uh, but yeah it's it's connected to the uh, shoulder that I like many people put it upper or lower part of the body but that is just that is also weird but this this seems logical that's okay maybe this looks a bit small but this could be the hinted perspective because if this wing goes backward instead of this way then it, this will be shorter for f because of foreshortening but if this wing goes this way this way and then it, it should be bigger because logically thinking such a big creature like a dragon trying to fly it will need huge wings to be lifted up into the sky so yeah that that is really really ma so many many Pegasus as well with, with tiny tiny wings and, and they never fly with that but if it is that the preference of the artist that's okay but if it is a mistake then it it can be fixed and it should be fixed yeah the head seems a bit small to this neck because this muscled mag, uh, neck hints a really heavy head and uh, and big dragons used to have or logically should have a huge head because they are big and predatory and and uh, eat whole humans for a bite and everything and yes the head should be a bit bigger a bit stronger with a with bit more thickness as well so like yeah because this is a big heavy head with big muscles and they have sp they need space I think that the the paws or hands or I don't know what kind of feet dragons have were based on birds because this is really bird like which is a good idea actually but this is also a problem with fantasy creatures you don't have references once again and also the ne uh, the tail could be longer the tails their main purpose is to balance the creature out so if you look at for example uh, cheetahs or kangaroos or really uh, animals they are actually using their tails because lions are not really in need of <laughs> a tail I think but but cheetahs, kangaroos, uh, really, I don't really remember any other animal, but there are, I am sure there are tons of it. They really use their tails as some kind of asset that helps them to take turns or jumping. Rats also use their tails just like that and mice as well. So they are usually have balancing. And if a big creature has a small tail, it will just flips uh, front because all the weight is here and nothing balancing out at the end. Yeah. As for the background, I love. The background is great. More depth could be added, maybe some hills or I don't know, maybe some mountains or castles <coughs> or something like that but otherwise I love the colors I love the lighting that's great it comes behind the dragon so we have some nice ring lighting and yeah it goes here this way and also here ring lighting is very nice nice uh, transparent or luminescence effect as well so yeah i i love it i love the dragon uh yeah 
it, it can be developed, but it is a really nice work. And yeah, the next, next time will be better as well. So let's just grab those horses I missed. But I could swear I put them in. Ah, tiny unicorns. Teeny tiny unicorns. Please. Do the thing. Oh, God. I just hit it. Great. So, unicorns. This is from Kanashi. And uh, yeah, we talked a lot about horses in general and horse art in general in the Instagram DMs. And uh, yeah, we talked about anatomy and references and I know Kanashi is not using references and uh, that's all clear. And uh, the horses considering they are not referenced our well, not made ever any horse kind of study. They look very, very great and cute. And honestly, this is very unique style. But if you want to keep the style, but still fix some things, I would definitely go first after the, the jawline <laughs> because they just have this, 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 I don't know. It's just dripping jawline. They just look old like like they are really really old horses and they just start to get the old look but this is a bone it it cannot be old i mean it can be old, but you won't really just just won't really lose their form like this at all so i just really just put a bit and uh, closer to the jawline because it will go like with this. This is around and a bit goes in, goes out, and then muscles again. As you can put them a bit higher, and then other eye. If we put the eye here. So yeah, if we wanna really be anatomically closer to the reality, then something like this will happen. And then of course, neck and ears. I always misplace my ears. So yeah, that have to be checked several times. So something like this, but yeah. If you just want to keep the, the basic the basic style or, or your style, you would just really put a bit bit less not let your jaw bones give up for because of gravity, so not giving for gravity. Just just a tiny bit, just don't don't this part is not needed. But yeah, otherwise I really love. <laughs> They are super cute. They have tiny little noses. I just want to boop them. That's a shading really, really so is these horses as well. I really love how you try to keep the perspective as well. If you want to keep this perspective incorrect, this, this ear have to be a little bit taller as well. Same for the nose, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's great. Same for this horse as well. They are both go to the same vanishing point. So keep vanishing points in, in mind and that's it. So let's see. And we hit the last one. 
Laura Horse Art. And yes, it, let's just see. <laughs> yeah, I think this is also just an overall. And yes, we had several lo rounds with Laura and uh, talked about, I think we talked about the shading and, uh, and anatomy a bit as well. That still stands. I, uh, I love that problem. My problem is the shading now, with the shading now. Ah, as for real life forces, you really just, just pick one or two reference and you will see how the bone structure goes. And if you grab a picture of the horse school, that you also will see. It is, I think, horse school schools are the simplest schools, really simple schools <laughs> you can find out there because they are just basically a triangle. Or a trapeze. It's, it's a triangle, but I don't know what kind, the, what is the name for it, the 3D version of the same object triangle. End of the story. <sighs> So uh, the problem is with this shading, this specific shading here. This is okay. You have to have shading here, that's okay. But this is not okay because this has no logic because you even put rim lighting here. That's okay because this is your light source and it is clearly above the horse. And light comes from here and, and, and it will hit this part of the horse as well. But it cannot be shading here if light is hitting the, the back of the horse. So you have to put light on the horse as well. You cannot shade it. This is cast shadow, but if this is cast shadow because of that tail is blocking the light, you cannot put rim lighting here because the tail is blocking the light. Same here, the tail is still here, blocking the light. You cannot put rim lighting there. But I think the rim lighting here is okay because the tail is right there, blocking, it's, it's here, it's between the two legs. And we'll block this leg, but this leg will survive. If you want, I think you, ah, thinking because this is the body. No, the rim lighting will be blocked here and will be blocked here as well. That's a great choice. This is good. You can rim light the, the ear as well because nothing is blocking that. Yep, that's okay. You can even light the tree a bit if you want, but uh, and uh, but not really necessary. But for an interesting event, you can really you can try to light the tree, and the grass. I think I can see some kind of tone value change, but I am not really sure. But maybe maybe I see, but just maybe my my tablet is too scratchy. But you can still give uh, some depth to your to your grass because grass is just not like one view, but you can still add lighter grass. Because maybe lighting hits it. And then add maybe darker grass in, in between because it will different grass really really just has so many colors and also couldn't have but not this tone is really dark and really saturated 
they don't use super saturated and super dark piece uh, colors in art because that is just too much too much for the brain so you can rather go to the less saturated version or the end of the the same color basically and and just use that because it, it will add up because you want the strongest values for your main character not for your background you want to push the background a bit into the the background the back because she is the star not the grass same for the tree the tree is uh, super dark and what i see first when i look at this picture is the grass and then the tree and then the moon because the moon is light of course and that okay it is light but the horse is basically the fourth thing i i notice on this picture but it should be the first one so this should be the darkest value and everything else should be less saturated as especially the background which is behind the horse and the grass in front of the horse can be dark because this is closer to us but uh, but still the horse should be in focus so yeah uh, what I would advise is look into building up art pieces and do some values to this for backgrounds oh i just said uh, about the horse score is really i think it's it is a really simple form because it is basically uh, a triangle and that's it but i will i will type it down that's it i mean i did, did draw some human scores and that that was horrible <laughs> that was super complex and yeah humans are complex and that's it okay guys i think we managed to tackle this down under 70 minutes that's great for a first try and uh, thank you for the pictures i hope it wasn't too horrible experience and uh, we finished all the pictures and yeah i see i plan to do another round the next weekend i know i was a little bit absent in the past couple of weeks but uh, writing the stories it's just sometimes just too much because sometimes i wrote four stories about the same picture because i just didn't have the perfect amount of s space for it in the instagram stories so yeah i really want to use the youtube platform more for this and other videos as well uh so yeah stay tuned for the future videos with subtitles <laughs> i am thinking about you and about myself as well and uh, yeah i have plans and so worth to subscribe if you want and yeah more content is coming so i hope you will have a good night or i may basically good night but uh, because i think most of you are in the nighttime side of the globe and uh, thank you for coming thank you for sending the pictures and have a nice evening bye